Ladies and gentlemen, so welcome to this course. My name is Elias Malouf and I'll be giving you the HTML basic development. Uh, you'll learn every single task there is in HTML and this course would be amazing if you could complete it with the whole web development courses. The rest are the CSS, JavaScript and we'll continue with more frameworks as we go. I'll also do some uh, PHP and try to do some uh, Python backend development. But for now, let's go with HTML5. If you have any questions, please leave the questions in the comments below. And let's get started. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. So in this video, we'll explain the software that we need for this course. Uh, we'll need three software for now. Uh, you can download them uh, on your computer. Uh, it's easily downloadable for both Windows, Mac, and Linux. Uh, we have first the Atom. You can choose Atom. All right, so here it is. You can download it from here. I already have the latest release. You can also download Sublime. You can choose between one of these two or your favorite text editor, but I really, really encourage you to use Sublime. It's one of the best text editors on the web. And there's iTerm2. We'll use that for managing the server later on. So this is for this video, thank you so much, and let's continue. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, so for now I want to explain the ABBR tag. It's not also an obligatory tag, but I want to make sure that you know it. Uh, the ABBR stands for something new as the abbreviation. It used to be abbreviation or an acronym, but now it's ABBR in HTML5. I'll explain more about HTML4 and HTML5 differences in later stages. So the ABBR stands for abbreviating text. If we go, for example, for the title being USA, the abbreviation of the United States of America. It's just abbreviating small, uh, large words into smaller letters. All right, that's it for now. Make sure if you have any questions to comment in the comment section below. Thank you so much. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So for now, we're going to explain the address tag. The address tag includes everything that you need to have between the address. So for example, your address, your email address, your name, your website, anything you need to know. So let's start with the first one, the address tag. Also, the address tag is not obligatory, but is strongly, strongly recommended so that the people that visit your website know where your business is, know where you are, know how to contact you. So it's very important to have the address tag. It's written by, for example, Elias, and here's the email. So if you need to send an email to Elias, it's mail to example at gmail.com. And you can say visit us at example.com, any website you want. So you can in change it, for example, to facebook.com slash your address, username, for example, your username. And you can change your country. For example, let's say the United Kingdom. You can say Lebanon. You can say Russia, you can say any part of the world. So that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to leave a comment in the comment section below if you have any question, and I'll be sure to respond to that. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So now I want to explain the anchor tag. The anchor tag is a very important tag, and it's an obligatory tag if you want to go from one website to another. The anchor tag, I, uh, they used to refer it in my university as the anchor that you throw off the ship. So to keep the ship on dock, it's the same for the A here in the HTML. You can use it to go from one website to another in the anchor over there. You can say, for example, I need to go from my website to google.com. Make sure to have the A as a beginning and the A as a closing. And also to have the H reference as to google.com, to, to point it to google.com. All right, that's the anchor tag. If you have any questions, please leave in the comment section below and I'll be sure to answer that as soon as possible. Thank you so much. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So now I'm going to explain the area tag. The area tag, if you want to include an area on the browser. So let's open back Google Chrome. For example, I need to use this area in order to draw a circle or a square or a rectangle. I can use the area tag. So area shape, it's rectangle, it can be square, it can be circle. And you can use the coordinates on the uh, browser. I cannot explain coordinates in details because it's just when you try with coordinates, you can know where to place your coordinates. You can have length, width, and height. And then in this area, you can also specify once clicked on, 
take you to another page. So I included example.com. You can use Google, uh, sorry, example.html. You can use google.com. And I'll explain what I mean by example.html later on. But for now, let's say that example.html. Once you click on it, it takes you to another page. All right, so another page on your website, example.html, it already takes you there. Thank you so much. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So for now, I want to explain the article tag. The article tag is the a tag that includes any article you can write in between these article tags. So for example, let's start with Google and say that Google Chrome is a free browser that is developed by Google. So you can try it on your own and I'll explain how you try it on your own later on. I just want to keep these videos as short, as concise as possible because if you want to go to later reference, you can just come into this video and learn about it. So article explains anything as an article inside your browser. You can use the tags. I'll explain the H1 later on and the P later on. But let's now say this is a heading and this is a paragraph. So uh, that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching and if you have any questions, please leave in the comment section below. For the H1, the P, please wait for the, the rest of the videos so that we can continue on later on. Thank you so much. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. So for now, I'm going to explain the aside tag. The aside tag defines some content that is aside from the content it's based in. So for example, we're, not, we're going to aside some content of the body tag. We can use the aside tag. It's not an obligatory tag, so for now, just make sure to use the aside tag and try it on yourself so that you can see the results in front of you. If you don't, we can explain it later on in the large examples. And thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave in the comment section below. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to this video. I want to make sure you know that about the audio controls. So the audio includes anything you need to play as audio. So for example, let's say the source is source src as music.mp3. So get the music.mp3, which is included in the folder as mp3. We need to make sure that the type is audio mp3 because, for example, you can have uh, WMV, you can have OGG, anything you want as audio. All right. So make sure you include the type as uh, most important part of the audio and let's say uh, use this as uh, audio controls I need to make sure to include that uh, for example if it fails you need to write uh, your browser your browser does not support sorry audio controls so I need you to learn something from me I make mistakes in these videos just for you to understand so if I made a mistake, please let me know in the comment section below. If you think I made a mistake or if you know that I made a mistake, please, 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 I beg you. I'm a human like you. So we all do mistakes. And I, on purpose, leave them in these videos so that you can make sure uh, to know, for example, that here is the most common mistake. Let me try to avoid it. All right. So if you have any questions or if you, or if you think I'm doing any mistakes, please leave them in the comment section below so that we can improve the course. And if there's something not clear, I need to fix out. Please, please, please let me know. All right. Thank you so much, guys. And I'll see you in the next video. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So now I want to explain the base tag. The base tag includes all the tags that you need to put in your page. For example, if I need to always go to google.com, I can use the base tag and it sends me to google.com instead of every time you're trying to use ahrefgoogle.com. That's the only difference in, in using base. You can just use base and it will define for all the anchors to use google.com and send you to google.com. All right. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, and I'll see you in the next video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to this course. So now I'm going to explain the BDI tag, which is a bi-directional isolation. It isolates all the direction of your post uh, so for example if you want to write here post hi or if you want to write a text uh, marhaba in arabic because it goes from right to left instead of going from left to left uh, left to right sorry like in english you can use the bdi it isolates it and it goes by direction so for example if you're going from left to right in your language it goes from left to right and if you're going from right to left you can go from right to left and this word can become like this one marhaba 
all right, which means hi or hello in English, in Arabic. All right, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. If you have any comments, please leave in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next video. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to this course. So now I'm going to explain the BDO. The BDO is totally different from the BDI. It's the total opposite. So for now, we're going to explain the BDO. It's the bidirectional override. So you override the direction. So for example, if it's from Arabic, from right to left, it goes from right to left, no matter what. If it's from left to right, it goes from left to right. That's it. For example, if you want to say direction, RTL, right to left, and you say, for example, uh, this text will go from right to left, it will go from right to left. You can try it and we'll see it later on in more examples. If you have any questions, please leave in the comment section below. And thank you so much for and joining us today. I'll see you in the next video. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So for now, I'm gonna explain the block quote. You know that in many parts of, uh, I think, a text, you need to have quoting something a citation. So because we need to make sure that it's quoted, because you can follow, you can be legally followed if you don't quote the artist or the author or anything of this type of paragraph. So. We can use the block quote tag. It opens and closes with the forward backslash also. And you say the site. So from example, I need to cite from example.com and you write the citation between the block quotes. And that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave in the comment section below and we can explain this in more examples later on. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, and I'll see you in the next video. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So I wanna explain the body tag right now. The body tag is anything between this part under the Gmail images, the sign-in buttons, and anything above the footer, which is here, Lebanon, advertising business about. So this is the footer, and this is the header. We'll explain these later in more details. So anything in between that is the body. The body tag has these tags. The opening tag is the body, and the closing tag is the body. And... Uh, it's an obligatory tag also. I need to know that the body is the most important part and it includes almost all of your content that you need to have in your website. Thank you so much. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So I need to make sure now to understand the B tag or the bold tag. The bold makes anything bold. So let me explain it in the text edit for now. Let's say this is bold, lorem, ipsum, dollar. If we remove the bold, that's num bold. So that's just the B tag, what it does. It just makes your text bold. All right, so where well, you can include it here and you can close to the forward backslash B. Thank you so much. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm gonna explain the BR tag. This is gonna be quick. As you can see here, for example, I wrote my name is Elias Maluf on each line, but it doesn't give you in HTML each line because Every white space is read as a white space in HTML tag. It's not read as uh, another line. So this, these will be on the same line. But if you want them to be in a different lines, we need to include the break tag or the BR tag. So my name is Elias Malouf will give you this output. But this one, if we include it, for example, in a paragraph or a P, P and P, it won't be each one on the same line. It will be on the same line only on line one for example all right thank you so much ladies and gentlemen if you have any questions please in the comment section below and i'll see you in the next video all right so welcome back ladies and gentlemen i'm gonna explain the button tag right now the button is anything that you need to click on so for example let's go to google.com google.com and this is a button google search i'm feeling a lucky button search gmail button search but you can have different designs which we'll explain later in css uh, a button should have a type button always unless stated otherwise and this is the text that should be inside the button i hope this clarifies the button tag and if you have any questions please leave in the comment section below and thank you so much ladies and gentlemen and i'll see you in the next video 
Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. So I just want to give you a quick overview over the canvas because I'm working on each tag in alphabetical order. I need to make sure to go over all the tags in HTML5 and I'm gonna just explain the canvas. The canvas can draw a red square, a blue square, a blue circle, anything you want can be drawn inside a canvas. Imagine it's an architecture canvas and it can be drawn on the fly and it's very easy to use. We just open with a canvas, we give it an ID and we close it here. I'm not going to explain more because you'll have to include JavaScript in that and this course doesn't include JavaScript so I'm going to explain Canvas more in that later on beginner JavaScript the courses thank you so much for watching this video if you have any questions please comment in the comment section below and I'll see you in the next video all right welcome back ladies and gentlemen so I'm going to explain the Canvas element the Canvas element is used to draw graphics on a web page uh, it's specifically for HTML5 and what is an HTML canvas? The HTML canvas is an element used to draw graphics on the fly via JavaScript. So it's an HTML5 tag only but it's used as a JavaScript tag. The canvas element is used in any container for graphics. You must use JavaScript to actually draw the graphics. You cannot draw uh, HTML, sorry, uh, anything without JavaScript. Canvas has several methods for drawing paths, boxes, circles, text, and adding images. So it's supported by all browsers. And we need to make sure from now on in HTML5 to know that every browser has uh, something in, uh, that supports it and it doesn't support. Uh, for a canvas, uh, it's supported by Google Chrome 4.0, uh, Internet Explorer 9 or uh, Microsoft Edge, uh, Mozilla Firefox 2.0, and Safari 3.1 and Opera 9.0. The canvas examples, uh, we'll take a canvas example over here, which is, for example, let's say, I wanna give it an ID, which is my canvas. I wanna also give it a width of, um, let's say, um, 20%, and I wanna give it a height of 10%. So that's the canvas that I want to draw in. Right, so sorry, that's a dollar. Uh, I'll take a canvas that's this thing, and I just want to say I, uh, it takes like a square, it opens a square with 20% width and 10% height, and gives you everything you need to draw in it. All right, you can, for example, let's say I need to have the canvas to show the border, so it gives we need to give it a style which is border one pixel. All right, sorry, and solid, and give it a coloration of zero, 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 zero. All right, so I want to give it these stylings. So a border of one pixel, make it solid, and give it a black uh, borders. All right, so we style the border right now, and if, I, for example, I want to draw anything in the campus. It's very easy. I'll show you how in the next video. If you have any questions in the meantime, please add in the comment section below. Thank you so much. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm going to explain the comment tag right now. Uh, it's a very small tag and it's very important for developers who are working on teams. It's an optional tag and you can use it or not. So we can start with the tag. It opens like this. Anything included between here, for example, let's say uh, lorem ipsum dollar is is not in the browser you cannot read this even if you have thousands and thousands of text it's, if it's included between comments it's not readable all right so comments is just for leaving uh, a future message or just communicating between teams about each tag thank you so much Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, so I opened Sublime directly, I just want to give a small note that my teaching skills or my teaching uh, technique is small videos, small, short, concise videos, I just don't like to go over everything in the same video. So let's start, uh, I want to explain something like, uh, by default uh, it opens on plain text, Sublime opens on plain text, you need to change it directly to HTML, so click on H, HTML, and if we write now h, it opens html tag directly. We have the whole set or the whole basic backbone core structure of html. Let me explain each of these. So the doc type html is explaining the document type for the browser. So this browser open up it html. html, html. We open the html tag and we close it over here. We open the head and we close it over here. 
we have the title and we have the body so first of all HTML is defining for the browser and each browser I mean by browser uh, Mozilla Firefox can be a browser uh, Google Chrome can be a browser uh, Internet Explorer can be a browser any browser you can choose is a browser and it should or it must open HTML all right so here's the head the head is the top part of the browser in the GUI or the graphical user interface we'll explain it later it shows only the top this is the body so from here to here is the body and this is the footer we'll explain these more in details in each section later on the title is the main title you see in the browser for let's let's try for example google.com as you can see here in google uh, is the title of google.com so that's the title okay the head is everything you need to place here. You can place images, you can place text, you can place anything you like. And the body is anything you place in the midsection between the header and the footer. So that's all for now. I'll explain each tag alone and we'll give examples on it later on. Thank you ladies and gentlemen. See you in the course. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to this course. And now I'm gonna explain the code tag. The code tag explain, uh, does everything in between uh, as computer code and uh, just changes the text style and font. That's all the code the tag does. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave in the comment section below. And I'll see you in the next video. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So now I'm going to explain the column group in just uh, one minute. So the column group is columns inside a table. I'm going to explain that more in details. I'm going to explain the table in around 10 videos. So the column group explains the column style so you can have a span of two giving it a size of two and the style with background color just red so you can give the column each column a background color that's what the column group does so you can change the column for each one all right thank you so much ladies and gentlemen if you have any questions please leave in the comment section below and i'll see you in the next video welcome back ladies and gentlemen I'm gonna explain the data tag right now. Uh, let me make sure about something first. The UL and the LI are table elements, and I'll explain the table and the forms in one full section. So, if you wanna get more information about the tables, please skip to the tables section and come back to the data tag, or you can just learn about the data and we'll see it in a large example uh, after some time. All right? So it's up to you. The data gives you the value or a reference for each uh, value you have in the table. For example, if you have tomato, its value is 21,053. If you have beef, its value is 21,054. So that's the difference between the data. All right. So it gives you a value for what you have in the table. And that's the data tag. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. If you have any questions, please leave in the comment section below. And I'll see you in the next video. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, now I'm going to explain the data list. The data list is uh, a list of options that you can have. For example, we take here the options of browsers. So we have multiple browsers that you can use on a computer. We can use Internet Explorer, we can use Firefox, we can use Chrome, we can use Opera, we can use Safari, and we can also use, let's say, let's go with uh, Microsoft Edge. So let's give option value Microsoft, sorry, Microsoft Edge. So that's the options that we have for the browser. We can add them in a data list and uh, we'll use the options that we want. We'll see that in more examples later on and that's all for now. If you have any questions, please leave in the comment section below. And thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next video. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. So now we have a description list that you can add here which is a DL and the data type of milkshake. So I want to explain the DD right now. The DD is a description or a something that you can describe all right so for example we have we need to know what type of milkshake we have we give it a dt as a milkshake and a dd as a strawberry or we can add another dd for example chocolate all right so we can give the types of milkshake and just have one uh, milkshake var uh, variable and two milkshake constants so for example strawberry milkshake or chocolate milkshake all right that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. If, I, if you have any questions, leave in the comment section below and let's get going. All right, welcome back ladies and gentlemen. Uh, now I'm gonna explain the del tag, which is the delete tag. So if you wanna delete, for example, uh, if you're doing a website and you need to do a sale, 
you have the original price at fifteen thousand dollars and you need to get it ten thousand dollars and whoa that's a lot of money but it's okay <laughs> so uh, we use the Dell it shows a line that cuts the fifteen thousand in half it doesn't cut the word but it just uh, goes in between the fifteen thousand horizontally all right so that's the Dell tag it's just delete tag and that's all it does thank you so much ladies and gentlemen for watching I uh, hope you enjoyed this one if you have any questions, please leave in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next video. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So if you want to give details uh, at the end of the website, you need to use the details tag, and you give it inside a summary. So we can use a summary, which says that you have a copyright of 2018, and these are the details of your website. So copyright, you can add, for example, also another summary, which says all rights reserved. Summary third third summary. So let's go third summary, which says, uh, "This is my website dot com." Blah blah blah, and you can add whatever you want. So the details are the details of your website. So if I wanna check who owns this website, uh, how the uh, contents are reserved, everything they should be in the details. All right. This is all for now, and I'll see you in the next section. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have any questions, please add in the comment section below. Thank you so much. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So now uh, I'm going to explain the DFN or the definition tag. So the DFN is the definition tag, as I've said. And it should be included inside a paragraph. So we start with the DFN and its definition for HTML. So let's say the DFN, we're defining the HTML. It changes the, let's say, text decoration for HTML to make sure that it's the definition, as it's, uh, as if you're writing definitions in a book, it's the same as writing in a website. These aren't much of use uh, these days because you can style them directly in CSS, but I'd like to go over all the tags available in HTML4 and HTML5. And I'll explain the difference later in HTML4 and HTML5, what's the difference, what do we have new, I'll, exp I'll also add a list of what are the tags that have been removed in HTML5 and substituted by another tags, and some tags have been removed completely. And we'll say that HTML is the language for creating, sorry, language for creating web pages. All right, so that's the definition of HTML, and uh, that's all for now. If you guys have any questions, please leave in the comment section below. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, let's use the table right now and explain a little bit more about the table. Uh, we can use the dialog inside a table and use the month and the year inside a table so it opens them as a dialog. That's all it does. That's the dialog tag. It's not mainly you much used because you can use the TR and the TH, which we'll explain more later on, and the tables. And that's all the dialog does. So it opens a dialog box or window and it makes it easy to use the pop up dialogs for a web page. So, for example, if you want to say, if you want to use a web browser, let's say we're going gonna, gonna to create a dialog for web browsers. All right. So let's do this. Go here. And, sorry, web browsers. And give it here, for example, let's say an internet. Explorer, or let's go for Mozilla, Firefox also, sorry, so that will be Mozilla Firefox, Google Chrome, so it opens them in a dialog, that's what the dialog does, alright, so it's just like a table, and inside a table, and it kind of pop up, that's, that's all it does, alright, thanks so much for watching ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you have any questions, please leave in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I want to explain the dir tag or the directory tag right now. And as you can see, I've added in the comment. It's strictly for HTML, so let's make sure to keep it just for HTML4. Uh, the directory is opens the directory. It's just like a table where the small elements where you can use, for example, let's we're taking the subsidiaries of HTML. We can use HTML or XHTML or CSS. That's what a directory does. It opens them in a somehow sort of table, but not in a table. Sorry, but not in a table. It's like more of a list, but with uh, giving them as bullets. All right, so bullet points. That's all it does. That's the directory. It's not used anymore, so let's just move over it very quickly. And make sure to know that there's a directory tag in HTML4 because HTML5. Some browsers are just supporting HTML5 these days. They're not supporting HTML4 anymore. 
So let's just make sure that we know it and that's it. All right. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions, please leave in the comment section below. And I'll see you in the next one. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So I want to explain the div class about the countries. So we now need to explain the United States for America, for example. We're taking it as an example. It's a country and it's the largest country in the American continent. And we're taking Canada as an full example also. And it's the largest country in the American continent. So what do I mean by the div? I explained the div already in a large video back then. And I want to explain the countries class. So for example, I want to make things much more clear. I want to keep the countries alone and have them a specific design. In CSS, I can use the div class and call the class in CSS where countries can have the same design. For example, I want them in blocks. I want them in circles. I want them in squares. I can use the class and modify the design as I want in CSS. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any questions leave it in the comment section below and I'll see you in the next one. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. I want to explain the most important tag in HTML which is the div tag and it's a division. So I need to make sure to know that it's a division. It's a division of a web page and it's going to be there for unlimited number of HTMLs that's for sure. So for example if we have HTML6 coming out soon, HTML7, HTML8, HTML infinity there's always going to be a div tag. So the div tag is a division. And I'm going to take my time explaining this one. It's going to be around three to four minutes. So just let me make sure you understand it very well. And I'm going to be trying to be very straight to the point, very concise on this one. So let's get started. I just wanna, don't want to lose time on this one. So I've already took the privilege and opened google.com page. And let's go to inspect. I need to have Google Chrome for only one reason. The inspect element here is awesome. So uh, let's go with this one, this division. Uh, okay, so this division is full from the almost like vanilla area above till the light blue area down. So it's a 980 by 233 pixel margin. All right, so that's one. Two, we gave it a height inside of HTML to be 233 pixels. So let's say that's the height. And we have a margin top of 89 pixels, which is the, around the vanilla area above. And we give it an ID, which is the LGA. The ID can be called in CSS. Why do we use an ID? So I want to make sure you understand the ID from here. And I'll include another video in, before introducing CSS later on to introduce the ID. But let's make sure to use the ID uh, always. All right. So you want to use a paragraph. You want to use a div. You want whatever you want to use. Make sure to use an ID. For only one reason. So if you have an ID, you can call it wherever you want. If you have a JS file, you can call it in JavaScript. If you have a CSS file, a cascading style sheets file, you can you call the ID over there. So make sure to have an ID everywhere. And from there, you can go wherever you want. All right. So you can call the div in anywhere and style it or animate it or use it for anything else. All right. So Let's continue. I'll explain the image more later on, but I need to make sure to know that the image here is called from an IP. Sorry, an API. <laughs> My bad. Uh, the API is hosted on Google.com, but it's just showing here that it's downloaded on our PC on images, branding, Google logo, two times. You know, we'll explain more about uh, how, how your images should be because sometimes an image needs to be one time zoomed in, two times zoomed in as much as it needs all right so a div has a lot of attributes that needs to know uh, to be new and known and um, these attributes are very important you can use unlimited divs and you can use anything inside a div you can add an image a music a paragraph spans and we'll come to all these later so if you have any questions about the div tag i'm really really sorry it took me a lot of time to explain the div a lot longer than the other videos but it's a very important tag it's always used so if you have any questions please in the comment section below and uh, thank you so much for watching please 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 make sure to understand the div tag if you don't contact me unlimited times i'll make sure you understand it you can email me my email is let me write it down for here because div is very important so it's elias at emailoof.com Give me an email on this one and I'll make sure to respond to you by 12 to 24 hours. 
and from there we can continue understanding more and more about web development. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Alright, welcome back ladies and gentlemen. Now we are going to explain the DL tag which is the same as the data list that we explained before. Uh, I want to say it's the totally totally the same it's just a description list with the terms and descriptions that you want to have so this let's say that this is the, the uh, terms and these are the descriptions so the term is the coffee for example I want to have a limited number of coffees and with all different descriptions for example I want to have a decaffeinated I want to have one with vanilla I want to have one with two spoons of sugar anything you want so you can add here for another description for let's say DD uh, sugars sorry two spoons of sugar of sugar you can also add the DD of uh, vanilla and that's it so let's make sure to know that the DL is the same as the data list we explained before but just know that this is a uh, data term and uh, sorry a description term if you want and this is a description list description so that's it all right let me make sure if you have any questions in the comment section below, you can email me at any time and please uh, let's continue to the next level. Thank you so much. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. So for this course, I told you that I'm going to explain each tag alone in the video. And I'm going to explain right now the doc type HTML. The doc type HTML is specifying the document type for HTML. Uh, for example, you can have it and you can't have it. It's not an obligatory tag, but it's really, really uh, important to have it. It just explains to the browser that you need to open this uh, page in the HTML markup language. That's it. Thank you so much. All right. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. In this video, we're going to use JavaScript. So we're going to move from HTML and use JavaScript. So that's JavaScript. And now we move to JavaScript. And we'll start with de declaring a variable C. And using a document dot get element by ID and naming the canvas, for example, my canvas, as we explained before, and closing it. That's it. So we define the variable and we need to get the context for this variable. So let's define another variable here, which is the context or the content, whatever you want to name it. C, the variable above dot get context. All right. So I'm telling him get the context. And it's a 2D canvas only. It's not a 3D canvas, so make sure to define that. And give it a context dot move to. Alright, so I don't want to move it. Keep it as is. 0, 0. It's very important to you know, define the move to here. Alright, so if you want to move it, just keep it as is. 0, 0. If you want to move it, uh, the x is the first number, so this is the x. Assume it's an x uh, y axis graph the x is the first number so i can move it one pixel two pixels three pixels unlimited pixels and the y axis is this one all right so this is the move to uh the context dot line to 100 by 100 for example uh, sorry line two i want to give it a lining all right so i want to line it uh let's say oblique uh, let's go for 200 or 300 by 100 now it goes oblique and I want a stroke all right so I want to give it a stroke so that's stroke and that's it so now we drew a rectangle all right having a line inside it you can try it right now and the line is uh, is visible with borders exactly and it's 300 by 100 so it's going 300 300 that's it all right so until it gets to the zero it's going 300 300 100 0 300 200 100 it keeps doing that in the campus all right so this is how we draw a line and in the next video i'll show you more uh, things you can do in javascript thank you so much ladies and gentlemen and i hope to see you in the next one if you have any questions please in the comment section below Welcome ladies and gentlemen, and I want to explain the DT tag, as I said, it's a description term, so you can use anything here, you can change it, for example, let's say pizza, oh, pizza is good, so pizza, pepperoni, vegetarian, vegetarian, and uh, 
which one which one let's go with the barbecue also barbecue all right so a pizza can have pepperoni a vegetarian and the barbecue this is all its attributes these are all its descriptions or details all right if you have any questions please leave in the comment section below and thank you so much for watching email me if you have anything else and i'll see you in the next video welcome back ladies and gentlemen so i want to explain the em tag right now the em tag is the emphasize text tag it's just the same as italics but we can use the em tag all right you can italicize your text by adding any text between two em tags that's it all right so if you have any questions please in the comment section below or send me an email or anything you want uh and i'll see you in the next video thank you so much for watching all right welcome back ladies and gentlemen we need to use the embed tag it's inside it can be defined for a container that uses an external application or interactive content to be parsed onto a plugin which can be uh, downloaded from any link in the cloud so we can use example.com slash embed slash hide or gif and we can see how it goes from there so you can try any embedded example where you can see i'll add some more examples in the, uh, later text where you can try to embed them embedding is uh, getting it from somewhere else and placing it in your, on your website without you needing to lose storage nor bandwidth it's just hosted somewhere and you're just getting it and playing it on your website that's all it does it can be a gif it can be a video it can be a wmv it can be a mp3 anything 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 you can think of you can embed it as long as it has an embed link all right so make sure to have an embed link and i'll add some example embed links in another text and uh, that's it thank you so much for watching if you have any questions please in the comment section below uh, or email me also and i'll see you in the next video all right welcome back ladies and gentlemen i want to say that we've ended the html5 over here i want to stop it because i don't want to go into in-depth javascript without explaining its basics because all the apis in html require basic javascript so i need you to wait for me and i'll explain the rest of the apis in the upcoming sessions with the javascript thank you so much all right welcome back ladies and gentlemen i want to explain something called the field set right now uh, the field set can be only used inside a form so you can see we open the form tag and we closed it inside a field set So the field set is just inside and the field set explains for example if we want to say it groups related elements inside a form So the name and the email can be a personality or a person or a human or anything you want So anything anyone can be in have a name can have an email and you can add its type text All right, so you can explain it's it's like more if you know if you're a programmer and uh, you create a class uh, human or a class person and you add its attributes it's just like that it's you're adding field set all right if you have any questions please let me know email me or add in the comment section below and thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video welcome back ladies and gentlemen so now we're going to explain the fig caption or the figure caption so let's assume that we want to import the image which is e Ibiza the PNG and the alternative name is also Ibiza. So if Ibiza the PNG doesn't load, we load the Ibiza and we're giving it a style of 100%. And the caption behind below it, it's like Instagram's caption or Facebook uh, photos caption. It's yeah, Ibiza also. You can use the fake caption. So that's the fake caption. It's just a figure caption and that's what it does. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoy it. And if you have any questions, please leave it in the comment section below. And I'll see you in the next video. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So the trigger tag is uh, implementing a trigger inside uh, of it. So you can use an image. It can be a circle. It can be a square. Anything you want. So it can be inside the figure tags. That's all it does. Gives it to you as a figure. All right. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please leave in the comment section below. And I'll see you in the next one. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, so I want to explain the font tag right now. The font tag has been used in HTML4 and it has been cancelled or discontinued in HTML5. 
So uh, we need to know that uh, the font has been replaced with CSS, so you can now implement um, a paragraph and give it an ID and change its font within the styling, or you can uh, directly in HTML, or you can use CSS, cascading style sheets, in order to change the font size or color. All right, so let's get from here. Uh, the font uh, can be modified from HTML4. You can give it a size, not a number, or you can give it a color. Or you can give it anything you want uh, in regards to giving any the font a design. That's all for now. Thank you so much for your hard time. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please leave in the comment section below. And I'll see you in the next one. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So this is a very short video. The footer tag. The footer tag is available in all HTMLs. And it's the lowest section of the browser. So let's go to Google Chrome. And here is the footer tag. You can add anything or uh, you can have... Um, hybrid text or images. That's all for the footer tag. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. All right, welcome back ladies and gentlemen. I want to explain the form right now. The form is uh, considered one of the toughest parts of HTML. Uh, it's very easy but many people struggle a little bit with forms so I just want to make this as clear as possible and I want to make this video as short as possible. So I took the privilege and added many of the components of a form. So first of all the form is still used till today in HTML4 and HTML5. You start with an HTML form tag and you give it an action. The action takes you to an action page.php. PHP is another language so PHP is a backend language and nobody knows the acronym for PHP so we just know PHP. All right. It's an abbreviation for something, but nobody knows the exact abbreviation, all right? So uh, we also need to add the method. We have many methods, but we'll use for this one the get method, all right? So uh, let's go with the first name. Uh, my first name is Elias, and I need to input this one. So I'll give it as input, sorry. I'll open this one and give it as input. And the type is just text, all right? So it's that simple. You just need to take text and you need to receive text the name of the input should be first name all right and uh, that's it that's it we're gonna have so uh let's use for example a line breaker so that they won't come all on the same line on the second one we'll use another sorry we'll use another input giving it a type of uh, text also and the name of last name and give it a line break for the address for example uh we can use also input type sorry input type uh we can try address so it's an address and we can give it the name of address that's that easy so it's very very easy to do that and you can change the name here to address and use a line break also all right so let's continue input type I'll include all the input types, but let's make sure to have, do most of the important ones. So for here, it's an email, and the name is email address, and it's a br. Okay, the age can be anything you want. So, but mainly I use uh, text because sometimes if you add, the, for example, a number numerical, uh, you can have problems with that. All right, so it's most important. Get, sorry, no, not it's most important. I just want to use the word like it's uh, really preferred to use text because sometimes people can write the age like this. So you can go with twenty. Sorry, twenty three. That's it. So that's how the people do it. They just don't go with numerics. So keep it as text because if you go with numerics in the input type. And people write in a, in a text, you can have a problem, all right? So you can have a problem with your inputs, and the input will be rejected. So let's go with a name and give it an H also. And this one is an input type of text also, and it can be a gender. I use text for, uh, sometimes people can use another type but then they can use a character but because you can say for example m or f but in my opinion it's best to use always text in age or in gender or anywhere because as i said here so if, if i want to say like let's write it as 23 and here as m so uh, if this is a character all right so and a person writes a male it can change all right but if it's uh, 23 and um, people want to change it to something else they can't all right so that's the thing 
uh, we need to make sure to always have text and uh, it's not a big deal on um, on let's say the memory or uh, saving down the data okay so uh, we can also have uh, explain somehow I want to explain some CSS and I want to say for example the display of the uh, form you can write this down for later CSS uh, there can be a block all right so it can be a one full block as a table and but the borders of course and you can have these to in include them and you can have a margin also margin and you can have it as a pix uh, pixelated or em so I prefer em 1 em for example 2 em etc and we can have also a border with several EMs, let's say 10 EM, and that's it. All right, so that's the form for now. Uh, I need to, you to make sure to understand the form. I have another video on forms coming right up. Uh, I need to explain something if you don't want to use PHP, if you want to make it just an HTML, CSS, uh, static website, you can do something else. It's called Forms Pre, where you can uh, divert all your... Uh, form uh, inputs to your email address all right that's it for now uh, thank you so much if you have any questions please leave in the comment section below and i'll make sure to include all the types that are on with the, the big document that i'll be sending you and uh, i'll see you in the next video welcome back ladies and gentlemen so i want to explain something called forms form .io. A disclaimer before i start i'm not affiliated with form spree i don't have anything with them so if you want to use them you can if you don't there's a lot of alternatives but i prefer form spree it's the best one all right so uh you can see the documentation over here so let's try with documentation if you have any questions but i i don't think because it's very easy it's a little bit with ajax that's asynchronous javascript uh, and xml so uh, I'll explain Ajax more in later videos, uh, especially with that JavaScript course. So let's go with try form spree if you want to try it. For example, let's see if you want to try it. And you can change your email address here. So let me use mine. It's Elias at emailoof.com. And you can send there. Sorry. It's Elias at emailoof.com. And it's Elias at emailoof.com. And we can send a test message. For example, test. Let's see if we get it. Oh yeah, I got it on my mobile. All right, so uh, let's continue from there. You can try it for your on your own, and um, let's go with the plans. So let's discuss the plans a little bit. You can use the free always; it's per perfectly good. It's robust and it's extremely good. And uh, let's say you want to do this, so you just take this form, uh, take the example, and put it here, and just change the variables. So let's change this one. To, for example, Elias at emailoof.com. Sorry, emailoof.com. The method should be post. We'll explain methods more later on. And the text is uh, so the text is um, let's say here's the text. It's the name, the email reply to, and you can submit and send. All right. So that's it. Thank you so much. If you have any questions of the about forms, please hit me on the comment section below or send me an email and I'll be sure to respond within 12 to 24 hours. And I'll see you in the next video. With the, uh, PS, we're done with forms, all right? So I'm really sorry to say that it took us a lot of time with forms, but let's let's finish this. So if you have any questions, I'll, I remind you and I urge you to please contact me so that we can fix them out and uh, we can continue over. Thank you. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, so I want to take a short second and ask you how are you feeling this course so far? Like are you improving or not improving? Do you like it? Do you not like it? There's a form associated with this video. I need you to please go and log in and fill in the data and from there we need to know uh, how are you feeling this course so far? Like are you enjoying it or not? What are the parts that you don't like it? What are the parts that you like it? and thank you so much because your data is very valuable for me and it helps me improve all right so this is my first ever course and i'm trying my best to give you all what i have all the knowledge that i have i'm going to put it on the table and continue with this course and i want to make so many courses that i need to make sure that everything goes according to plan 
all right so please 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 check out the form and give me your ideas give me your feedbacks give me anything all right write anything all right i like this course right this suck and this course sucks all right so anything 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 that comes up your mind about this course right now please write it down thank you so much and i hope you enjoyed this video and i also hope that you are enjoying your day and everything's going good so uh i'll see you in the next one Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, so now we're going to explain something called the frame set. Uh, the frame set can be used within the frame tag, and I want to make sure to tell you that the frame tag has been discontinued since HTML4, and it's not supported anymore in HTML5, but I need to make sure to you know how to understand and how to use it. Excuse me, so here's the frame set, and let's delete this one, and let's delete this one here over here. And include between the frame sets. So long time ago, there wasn't a GIF uh, as it now. So they used to use uh, frame sets, and uh, they used to give each frame, while appearing, a certain number of uh, times. So for example, I want to the first one needs to appear 25% of the time. Sorry, 25% of the time. The second one needs to appear 25% of the time also. The third one needs to appear. Uh, let's say this one needs to appear 10% of the time. And the, the fifth one, and the fourth one, sorry, needs to appear 20% of the time. So now we have 20, 10, 30, and 50, that's 80. So we need to appear the uh, fifth one on 20% also. All right, so then we need to include a new frame, which is frame src, and give it frame a dot, sorry, frame a, frame a dot html frame src frame src give it frame b dot html so you can use one frame only and you can use unlimited frames it's up to you and frame src frame c dot html and we can remove this one so uh, we have three frames and we can use frame d src i like to type them that's it sorry sorry for taking so much time to type them but i just really enjoy typing them and the frame d is uh, this one so we have now also frame e which is frame src frame e dot html and we remove this frame so we can have uh, the frame one in which it will appear first and 25% uh, of the time second one which will appear 25% uh, of the time third one will appear 10% of the time fourth one will appear 20% of the time and fifth one will appear also 20% of the time and that's it so uh, we are accepting five frames which will complete a full picture and we're accepting them as 25 25 25 20 percent 20 percent it's also not time you can just for uh, let's say not include them as GIF, but you can uh, make it as a full set, full picture, and have it 25, 25, 10, 20, 20. And that's it. All right. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed the frame set. I need to make sure to add it as a note. It is not used anymore in HTML5. And that's it for now. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed this video. And we'll continue in the next one. Bye. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, so now we'll explain the head tag. The head tag is anything that includes the upper part of the browser and the GUI. Let's see that in Google Chrome. So here's the head tag from here to almost here. It's like around 2-3 centimeters max. Alright, and uh, the head tag can include the title and the head tag is an obligatory tag. Thank you so much. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, so now I'm going to explain the header tag. And the header tag is one of the most important tags in HTML. And I'm going to show it to you on a real website. So let's go to bbc.com. And this is a header tag here over here. So it's saying hundreds detained in violent French riots. So uh, it's a very important tag. So we go here, for example, hundreds 
detained in French rights. You can remember every one, but I just went to this one. And here, for example, police fire rubber bullets and tear gas at rioting protesters in Paris at, as cars are set alight. This comes in um, H6, for example. Police set off tear gas. Blah, blah, blah. Alright, so if we went to this one and we took this one instead of alarm ipsum and I'll spin alarm ipsum in the next video okay so this is uh, for example a full paragraph so that's that's the thing I need you to make sure of uh, the first one is the most important part it's also the header it has h1 h6 you can include any paragraph and you can remove the paragraph and uh, put it outside the header it's up to you so it's up to what you need to do in the article if we can have it as a full header or you can have the paragraph outside of the article that's all for now thank you so much for watching if you have any questions leave them in the comments section below and i'll see you in the next video all right welcome back ladies and gentlemen so now we're going to explain the headings from one to six the headings are types of uh, lines or you can say types of text and text size so we can start with the h1 which is heading one and it's the largest text in the group and you can have h2 which is a bit larger but uh, it's not the largest h3 is a bit smaller and you go with h4 to the small one h5 smaller and h6 smallest uh, it's very easy to do them and it's very important because sometimes you just don't want to decorate that text it's just you want to make them big or small you can use h1 to h6 and that's it Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, leave in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next one. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So now I'll explain the HR tag. The HR tag is a very simple and easy to use tag, and this one is going to be a very short video. The HR tag just splits two text in a thematic view, so it's just changed the theme of the content. So, for example, let's say if I'm talking about two different topics, I can use the HR to split between them without having to split uh, within paragraphs and that's all HR do, it does. Uh, it doesn't have a closing tag but you can use that, uh, it like this or you can add one over here, it's just the same. Alright, so uh, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. If you have any questions please leave it in the comments section below and thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this course. Uh, the HTML tag is an obligatory tag. It's very important to have the HTML tag and it, the browser won't open anything if you don't have the HTML tag. So what's the difference between the one on line one and the one on line three? The one on line one is opening HTML file, so it's telling the browser that we're starting here with HTML. The one on line three is closing the HTML tag and it's telling the browser that we're stopping here and we're not continuing anymore. All right, so this one, any tag with a forward backslash is just closing the tag. All right, thank you. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So the section tag will include this, everything like a div tag. All right, so it's just specifying a specific section of a web browser. That's all the section does. All right, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. I hope to see you in the next video. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I want to explain the span right now. Uh, the span is an inline element that does not start a new line and only takes up as much width as necessary. So, for example, I just I don't want to reserve the whole uh, division for nothing. So I use the span. It reserves only just to the number two. All right, and the width also till here. That's it. That's all it reserves. The height is until number two, and the width is until the end of the span. That's all the span reserves, and it's very good if you want to make sure like to get over things that uh, can use you a lot of space so make sure to use the span if you need that and uh, make sure to know that it's also modifiable in CSS we'll come back to CSS later on and we have an example about each and every one of them explaining the difference between the span and the div and you'll see it in live that will help you much more thank you so much ladies and gentlemen I hope you enjoyed this video if you have any questions please leave in the comment section below and I'll be sure to see you in the next one Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, so I want to explain the symbols, so for example if I say I need to have a dollar, I can just put it here and say a dollar, so I use the N dollar to explain the N dollar, and if I want to use the Euro for example, I can use the N Euro, 
I'll be tagging uh, a small file having all of these together, the ends that you can use, and please be, uh, read them and be sure to understand them. If you have any questions, please in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next one. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So now I'll explain the title tag. Uh, don't worry, I kept the head tag on purpose because I need you to know that the title tag needs to be inside the head tag because it can be outside of it because uh, it's in the upper part of the browser. So as we explained before that Google Chrome, let's say google.com, this Google over here is the, head, the title tag. You can name it anything you want. We'll see that in the later examples. Thank you so much. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, we explained most of these tags. We just didn't explain the section tag. I'll explain it right now. I want to make sure that you know that these tags are also used in HTML5. All right, and the header, footer, and article are specifically for HTML5. All right, so I mentioned that, but I need to make sure that these are specific for HTML5 as well as the section, and I'll explain that in the next video. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, and I hope to see you in the next video. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, so I want to explain the italics tag. I already took the privilege and tried it on just paste, so that's italicized. So let's go in, in uh, Sublime, it's just the i tag, it uh, italicizes your text and makes it like this one. That's all the i tag does. Thank you so much ladies and gentlemen for watching this video, if you have any questions please leave it in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, welcome back. One quick note about uh, the difference between ID and class. An ID only contains uh, a unique element or a unique key. That's it. For example, I want to design France alone. I give it an ID. While a class can be used by multiple uh, tags and can be defined in CSS. That's the difference I need you to know between ID and class. And thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you in the next one. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, so I want to explain the iframe. The iframe is different from the frame and it's still using today is HTML5. So uh, let's say the iframe is an inline frame and it's just a frame when it's inline. It doesn't have to be a separate uh, size or a separate division. So you can fetch it from any source or you can fetch it locally from example let's say images for backslash example.png directly gets the frame that you want or just a gif you can also include a gif but make sure to have the, the gif in the iframe style so it opens or you can have it as a jpg that's all you can have all right thank you so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you in the next one if you have any questions please in the comments section below all right welcome back ladies and gentlemen so now i'll explain something that's very very important in html and you need to know that because uh, it's one of the most basic component structures it's the core i want to say it's the backbone of html and it can be very important in very useful at times we'll have a complete course for that but for now let's get started so i want to explain the script tag it includes everything you need to have for a script for including something like animation for including a specific code you can <coughs> sorry for that you can include node.js which is the server side uh, design and anything anything you want you can include in the script type so uh, i want to delete these first the type and keep the script tag alone so script is defined directly by sublime as script type id a javascript but i want to keep it like this so i want to go with document dot get element by id sorry get element uh, each one is capital okay except the get so elements capitalized at first by capitalized at first id capitalized at first demo dot inner html all right so what do we have here so we're telling the document I'm going to explain this line only, and we'll continue from there. So, I want to tell this document, the document that I'm writing over here, that document, hey document, how are you? Give me your element by the ID, which is a demo, or for example, let's say hello, or for example, let's say hi, or for example, let's say Elias, whatever you want, but I want to use demo, because we're just giving an example over here. Demo dot inner HTML, so from this HTML, this, this, this one, get me to write hello world all right 
and a semicolon. Why does the semicolon matter in JavaScript? Because in JavaScript, it's a scripting language, it's a programming language. In every time you want to finish a line, you use a semicolon. All right, so that's a very, very, very important note. Please, please, please try to review this video. Try this at home. Try it a trillion times. Make sure you understand script. If you don't understand script, please email me. Please add in the comment section. Script is a very important tag. I haven't been saying or going stressing a lot on uh, asking me about the other tags because they are good, but they are not as important as script. All right, so I need you to make sure that you know script very very solid before we jump into the example so if you have any question of any type please shoot me in the comment section and i'll see in the next one all right welcome ladies and gentlemen so this one is gonna be into three chapters it's gonna be an image tutorial in part one part two and part three so we can start with part one including from local files and uh, then part two we'll get it from a website and part three will host it online all right thanks welcome back ladies and gentlemen so uh, now i want to for example host an image and i just don't want to for example get it from the link area it is there so i go to imagebb.com i say start uploading and i go back here to desktop and test that's the cat image and we upload it we click on upload 9 percent 10 percent complete wait a sec anytime soon all right so uh we get the full link all right and we copy paste it over here we take this one all right so we take the img src we copy it and we go to the sublime and we get we can get now the image from the web we don't need to have it hosted in a folder if we have very much photos and you don't want to keep them in a folder and you just don't want to lose track of them I prefer you use links all right so that's the second type of image uh, fetching you can do the third time is somehow similar but I'll explain in the next video if you have any questions about this one please leave it in the comment section below and thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one welcome back ladies and gentlemen so I want to include the images right now so the images is part of the HTML's main course uh, services if we need to get images from the web or you can get them locally or you can upload them to the folder it's up to you but uh, all services can work equally the same when it's on the web so let's start uh, with uh, the local ones if for example i want to get a, a picture of a cat and it's saved locally uh, let's just explain how the process works you go and get the uh, and the picture you go and do it as save images and you go with desktop and that will be a test cat.png oh it's a jpg so we can change this one to jpg and it's saved so here it is cat.jpg and we rename it so that will be cat.jpg and we change this one because the format it really differs okay so if it's a png it won't work so you need just to make sure it's a jpg File. All right, so if it's JPG, we keep it JPG. If it's a PNG, we keep it PNG because the system won't understand where you're referring to. All right, so that's all for now. If you have any questions, please leave in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next video. All right, so I want to explain here uh, the styling within an image. So, for example, I want to style and give it an image width of 44%. This is the image that I have, it's demo.jpg, and I want to have it a max width, that's the maximum it can go, the maximum it can stretch by the width, and uh, if you want to say horizontally, and vertically, it needs to go 93% of the page, so within the, this page, I need it to go 44%, that's it, so this, let's say this is a 100% page, 50% is over here approximately, I want it to go a maximum of a nine, a 44%, and for the height, it's 93%, so this is 100%, and here's like, let's say, Here's around um, here, like here, 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 ninety-three percent. So that's uh, all the image that will take. The demo.jpg will take. All right. So you can start with an image tag without having to go to a CSS tag and naming it all over again. All right. That's it for now. If you have any questions, please leave in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next one.
All right, so welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So for now, we have this image uh, of a cat. I wanna, for example, copy it and use it somewhere else. So let's say, copy link address, and uh, to verify that the address has been copied, we open a new tab and we check it. So it didn't copy the type address. Hmm. So we have a problem. That happens a lot. So if you add a, a link address, it won't work. Why? Because uh, it's not the image address. So we have a link address and an image address. We need to get the image address. So copy image address and now we try it. Oh, okay. Bingo. That's what we want. So we close the tab, we go back to Sublime and we use IMG source and we add it over here. And that's it. So I want to explain something else also in this video. I want to explain the ALT. So the ALT, if, for example, for any reason the photo can't load, or you have someone who can see colors, you can add an ALT or an alternative. So it's a cat photo. You can add that in the, in the ALT. The ALT is optional, but it's highly recommended for good user experience. All right. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, leave in the comment section below. Thank you so much again, and I'll see you in the next one. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, so I want to explain the ins or the inserted uh, tag. So, uh, for example, if I have a del or a deleted tag, we explained back then. Uh, for example, let's say goodbye, and I want to insert hi. It inserts it uh, with an underline, and you can insert it, for example, with a, an exclamation mark. So, for example, if we say here, uh, goodbye, a line will cross goodbye. And the high will have an exclamation mark and an underline directly below it. So that's the ends. It's just inserting elements into a paragraph. It can be used inside a paragraph, inside a division, or anywhere you want. All right. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for uh, watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please in the comment section below. And I'll see you in the next one. Ladies and gentlemen, so welcome to this course. My name is Elias Malouf, and I'll be giving you the HTML basic development. Uh, you learn every single task there is in HTML and this course would be amazing if you could complete it with the whole web development courses the rest are the CSS JavaScript and we'll continue with more frameworks as we go I'll also do some uh, PHP and try to do some uh, Python backend development but for now let's go with HTML5 if you have any questions please leave the questions in the comments below and let's get started Thanks. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So in this one, I want to explain the font size, the color, and background color. These are not changed only by styles in uh, HTML or in CSS. They can be changed here with JavaScript. So I'm telling the demo account or the demo.html or the demo file, please change the font size, give it a style of 10 pixels, and give the color style of blue, and the background color should be orange. So uh, you can also ma manipulate the styles, the HTML styles within a script. Sorry, 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 sorry. This is a script here, not a style. All right, my bad. So this is a script. And um, I want you to make sure that you can modify anything and everything within JavaScript. So JavaScript is the mother of them all in web. All right, so that's what I want you to know. JavaScript is the main uh, component of web design all right so as much as we get in this course i need you to make sure that we need to know much more in javascript later on thank you so much for watching this video and i hope you enjoy it and i'll see you in the next one all right let, welcome back ladies and gentlemen so let's assume that we need to have a keyboard input uh, anything inside of these tags so it's just the it takes in the text you add it inside it for example, let's say Elias is a programmer. I want it to lie, look like it's a keyboard input, so I include it between two KBD tags, and that's it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I want to explain the label tag. The label tag is included inside a form, and it can be included it's outside a form, but it's mainly used inside forms. So you can also add it over here, and you can try it. The label part is uh, just giving, for example, specifying for what I'm using this uh, input type. So, for example, if I want to input name and I give it an input, 
as uh, input type equals text. All right, so if you want to have an input type text and you want to give it a name, you can label it inside of that text uh, input, uh, giving it a name. All right, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please let us know in the comment section below, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, so I'm going to explain something called the LI, which is a list item. It's available in both uh, unordered and ordered lists. Alright, so it just doesn't change and it only changes with a type. So if we want, for example, let's say I want an unordered list without numbers, I use the LI and it shows it as bullets. And if I want it to, uh, as ordered with numbers, I use also the LI and it shows it to me with numbers. Alright? Thank you so much ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you have any questions please leave in the comment section below and I'll see you in the next one. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, so now I'm going to explain the link tag. The link tag is anything you want to take this file and get from this file. So for example, uh, I want to send all the tags and all the lists that I have of uh, the IDs and of the elements that I have in my HTML file. I use the link and check with the styles.css uh, what's going up. Uh, so, uh, I want to explain something very short and very simple. May, most of the times we call our HTML files, the main HTML file as index.html and the CSS file as styles.css. But it's not obligatory, you can call them whatever you want. But we know that in terms of, for example, you want to globalize your files, so whether ever any coder in the world wants to read about your files, you can just send them to uh, styles.css or index.html and they'll see it very, very easily. All right, so that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions, please uh, use the comment section below and I'll see you in the next one. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So I want to explain our lorem ipsum now as promised. Uh, lorem ipsum is just some dummy text you can generate to test your website. You can use, for example, let's uh, reduce the amount to 50 and start, of course, with lorem ipsum and generate some lorem ipsum. So here's the lorem ipsum and it gives you generated 50 paragraphs, 4458 words, and that's 30,096 bytes of lorem ipsum. That's around 30 kilobytes. And uh, you can choose any language you want so choose your language according to your preference and you can go from there i hope this was a clear video if you have any questions please leave in the comment section below and i'll see you in the next one in the upcoming two videos i'll be explaining about lists we have two types of lists ordered and unordered and we're gonna explain how to use them uh, inside of each other and how to use the list elements inside of each other so that's all for now thank you for watching with this video and i'll see you in the next one Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, so I'm going to say the main content of a document and use the main tag. So anything in the, inside the main tag is anything that's main inside a document. So if we want to make sure that the user reads it, uh, we need to use uh, the main tag and open it inside, open anything inside a main tag. You can also specify h1 till h6 inside a main tag. So I include, sorry, I included them inside of each other. Let's get them out. So if uh, we want to make sure that everything's going to be cool, we need to add the main tag to make it on the main of the web browser. Thanks so much, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So now we have the meta char set. I want to explain it a little bit. It's not an obligatory tag, so make sure to know that. The meta char set explains the part that you need to know about the chars or the characters that you have in your titles or your body or anything that you need to include in your website. So UTF-8 is the globalization of all the characters in the world. So when you need to have something specific, you can Google the meta char sets. But in general, the most evenly used or the most frequently used is the UTF-8. In 95 to 98% it's used the UTF-8. Thank you so much. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, so this was a short notice, I need you to know that most of the tags that I don't specify are used in both HTML and CF4 and HTML5, so 
uh, anything that I don't specify that version is used in all HTMLs. Those that are specified the version is either currently uh, used in HTML4 or HTML5. Just a small note. Thanks. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So I want to explain the no script tag. So we have the script tag, which includes everything in JavaScript. I want to write some in JavaScript. But I'm not sure that the JavaScript uh, that I'm writing is uh, supported by all the browsers in the world. So I use the NoScript tag. The NoScript tag goes and says your browser does not support JavaScript at the time. All right. So, so for example, some of the elements in your JavaScript blocks are not supported, but some of them are. So well, it goes supported. It runs the script uh, well. All right. So if uh, it's supported, just runs it. If it's not supported, it goes and opens the NoScript tag and tells you whatever it has, there has to be in the NoScript tag. So it's just an if-else condition. If it uh, supports JavaScript, go with the script. All right, so we're good. If it doesn't, please go and open the NoScript and write whatever the NoScript has on the window of the browser. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, put it in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next one. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, so I'm going to start with the order list tag, so it's OL, and you can say for example if you need order list, let's say first I want to uh, drink coffee in the, sorry there's a E, in the morning. Second item on my list is uh, I want to go to my job. Third list on the item is I want to be home by uh, 8 p.m. Alright, so these are the items on my ordered list. For example, I need to make them in order, so I use an ordered list. So that's an ordered list, and we'll see an ordered list in the next video. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed this one, and I'll see you in the next video. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I want to explain uh, the types of ordered lists. Also, there are multiple types. We have the one type. You can add a one before each uh, list item. You can also add an a. Uh, you can also add a small a, and you can also add a capital uh, Roman uh, numbers. That's i, double i, triple i, or it can be iv or v. So that's uh, that's the types of. Uh, Order list. Also, in addition, you can have the Roman numericals in short letters. All right. So take a look at these and play around with them. If you have any question, please leave in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm gonna explain the unordered list, and it includes, uh, for example, you can add anything on your grocery list. You can have one kilogram of tomato, two packs of pasta, you can add anything in an unordered list and you don't have an inside numbers. That's an unordered list, that's the difference. So, thank you so much ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, so I want to explain the types of unordered lists. We have four types of an unordered list styling, so we have the disk type, we also have the circle type, we have the square type, and we have the none type. So each type can uh, form a style for uh, the unordered list. And as we mentioned that we have the list items that needs to be there whenever we need to have a list. Thank you so much ladies and gentlemen and I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. So I want to explain a little bit of, give a little bit of an extra session about ordered and unordered lists. Mm -hmm. So the ordered lists are anything that as we said they can be in order one two three four so we can include unordered lists inside ordered lists so the first list can be unordered so for example I want to include the what's on my uh, to get today for example I want to get tomato and potato I need another unordered list and I want to add inside it um, my dream cars for example a BMW and a Chevrolet and in the third unordered list, for example, I want to add, what do I want to do today? Web development, add four, and app development is coming soon. <laughs> so we have another course coming up, it's in app development, so I thought I'll give it to you as a blooper inside the extra video. And... Um, that's all for now. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. 
I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next section. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks!